Today we're going to talk about the properties of logarithms. We're going to use our calculator to complete this table below. Um, so in your calculator, remember to get the log, it's next to the 7. So if you hit the log of 0 and enter, we know it's going to be an error because there, it's not in the domain of our function because we can't take the log of 0 or a negative value. So then I can go to the next one, the log of 1, which we know is equal to 0 because it's one of our properties. And then we could do the log of 1 because remember, if the log's not it doesn't have the base written, it's base 10, and so um, the top, um, these values that we have right here are all using this log, with which is base 10. So go ahead and pause the video, and um, when you pause the video, answer all these questions on this first page on your own. When you're done, you can unpause it, and we'll check our work. So here's the values from the table. And if we do the log of 3 plus the log of 5 and add those values from our table, here's 3 and here's 5, we would get 1.176. And then if you go to the table and look at the log of 15, notice it's also 1.176. So if we do the log of 1 plus the log of 7, we would get 0.845. And the log of 7 on our table, notice, is 0.845. So you guys can complete these two below, and again, make sure you've already finished this first page. So when you're done, you should notice that each of these values from this first column and the second column are equal. And what does that mean for our conjecture? If we are adding two logs, how did I get this number here? Well, how do 3 and 5 make 15? Well, if we multiply them, 3 times 5 is 15. How do 1 and 7 make 7? Multiply them. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times 2 is 10 times 2 is 20. So that means, what do we do? We're taking the argument. Remember, the argument's what you're taking the log of, the m and the n. So we're taking that and multiplying those values inside the log. So the log of m times n would be our answer. Now, why does that work? Because recall, the answer to a log is an exponent. And so if we had this in exponential form, a to the m times a to the n, when you have something being multiplied with the same base, you add the exponents, a to the m plus n. So if the answer to a log is an exponent, if you have two logs being added, that means then you're going to be multiplying the arguments. So that makes sense based upon this property. So looking at question number three, same thing. If you were to use the table above, you would notice this is 0.477, and this is also 0.477. Again, you guys can finish filling in these right here. So after you finish filling those in, you would notice that this column equals this column. So how do we get 3 from 6 and 2? Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So using our um, work above, we can make a conjecture that the log of m minus n is equal to the log of the arguments being divided, m divided by n. And so recall that if you have the same base being divided, what do you do with the exponents? You subtract them. So remember the answer to log is an exponent. So if we have our exponents being subtracted, that makes sense that we are dividing the arguments. And then for this next part, we would do the same thing. Looking at our table above, we should get 1.556. And same thing here. And you all can finish the rest of those. And to make the conjecture then, what happened? How do we go from here to here? It's a little harder to see, so maybe we can think about this side going over here. So how would I take this side and go to this side? Well, 6 squared is 36, 5 to the third is 125, and 2 to the fourth is 16. So the log of m to the power of x, what did we do? We took that exponent and put it in front. So this is the same thing as x times the log of m. And recall that a to the m power to the n power, you, what do you do when you have a power of power? You multiply the exponents. So that makes sense that here these are being multiplied because this is an exponent. And remember, the answer to a log was an exponent. So this is being multiplied by this exponent here. 
And so those are the properties of logarithms. And we're going to go ahead and look at them again and go ahead and use them in some problems. So recall that the log base b of b is equal to 1. Again, why is that? Because b to the first power equals b. Log base b of 1, recall, is equal to 0. Why is that? Because b to the 0 power equals 1. So we've already talked about that, and we put that on our graphic organizer. And you can also add these properties that we're talking about today to your graphic organizer that we looked at the other day. So the product property for logs. So for this, we have the log of b of a plus log b of e. So again, we said when we have two logs being added, we can make it into one single log. And we do what with the arguments? Well, we multiply them. So this is a log base b of a times e. So notice we went from two logs to one log doing that. So down here, we have the log of 8 and the log of 8 being added. So to make it into one log, this would be the log base 8 of, what do we do with these two? We multiply them. So 4 times 12 is 48. Over here, remember the base isn't written in space 10, so we have the log of the same base being added. Um, and so that means that we can multiply the arguments. So this is equal to the log of 7 times 3, which is 21. So remember that the base is 10 when it's not written. It's a common log logarithm. So looking at the next one, we have the log of 3 of 8x. So here we went from expanded form, we call it when it's written like this, to a condensed form, which is writing it as a single log. Now we're going to go the opposite direction. Can we go from a single log into an expanded log? So how would we separate these? We notice that the 8 is being multiplied by the x, so that means we can expand this by writing log base 3 of 8 plus log base 3 of x. Over here, same thing, can we expand this? So to expand this into multiple logs, we know that we're going to be adding in between because it's all being multiplied. So this is the log base 5 of 2 plus the log base 5 of A plus the log base 5 of B. And that's using our product property for logarithms. For quotient property, when we have two logs being subtracted, we can combine them into a single log by taking the arguments and dividing them. And so I'm going to make a note back up here that this is expanded form, and this is condensed, or we say single log. Same thing down here. This is the expanded form and this is the condensed. So can we rewrite A as a single logarithm using our formula? So if it's two logs being subtracted, we can divide the arguments. So this is the log of 5 and this would be 24 divided by 6, which of course we can reduce. And so this becomes the log base 5 of 4. Looking at the next one, same thing. Two logs being subtracted, we can condense it. Again, this is base 10 um, by dividing the arguments. So that's equal to the log base 10 of 3. Here, can we expand this using the property of logarithms? Yes, we can. If we are dividing the arguments, we can expand it using subtraction. So log base 2 of 7 minus log base 2 of x. Over here, this would be the log base 4 of 12 minus the log base 4 of y. And the last property that we talked about was the power property. So for this one, if we have an exponent, we can bring that down in front. So this would be e times the log base b of a. And so for this, this is the condensed form. So the single log, and this is what we call the expanded form. So looking at a then, log base 3 of x to the fourth, we want to go from the condensed form into expanded form by bringing that 4 in front. Over here, if you have a radical 
in order to do this problem, the first thing you would need to do is to rewrite this as an exponent. So recall that if you have a to the m over n power, if you have a fraction exponent, you can rewrite this as a radical. This is the same thing as the nth root of a to the m power. So up here, this square root, we can rewrite as a power, the log base 5 of x to the 1 half. And we needed that power in order to rewrite this in expanded form because that allows us to take that 1 half and put it in front. So this is 1 half log base 5 of x. Over here, we're going to go from the expanded form to the condensed form. So that just means we need to bring the power up. So log base 5 of y squared. Over here, we're going to bring this up as a power. So this is the log base 2 of w to the 2 thirds. And normally, when we are rewriting it in um, the condensed form, we want to rewrite this as a radical. So this would be the log base 2 of the cube root of w squared. So remember, we did this graphic organizer the other day. We filled it out. Um, so down here, you can go ahead and add this to your um, graphic organizer. So today, we just talked about these formulas down here. So we just added these. And so the left side is all the condensed form, and this is the expanded side on the right side. Um, so that would be something that would be good to add to your graphic organizer. So now we're going to put it all together. To write a logarithmic equation in expanded form, so expanded form is what we're going to do first. Write the log as the sum or difference using the properties of logs. There's no radicals in the final answer, so always rewrite it as an exponent. No exponents in the final answer bring down in front of the log. So let's go ahead and look at these examples. For the first one, we want to write this in expanded form. So that means we want multiple logs. So for this, notice that if you look at the argument, what you're taking the log of, you have 7 times x times y. Because this is multiplication, I know if I want to expand it, I'm going to be using addition. So this would be the log base 5 of 7 plus the log base 5 of x plus the log base 5 of y. Looking at number two, notice that the argument's being divided. So for this one, this would be the log base 8 of 5 minus the log base 8 of y, because the um, denominator always is one you're going to be subtracting. And this one is our last property that we talked about, so the log base 4 of x. And where does that 9 go? Remember, it's brought down in front. So 9 times all of that. Looking at question number 4, 5, and 6, see if you can do these on your own. So pause the video, and when you're done, unpause to check your work. So looking at this first one, the log base 6 of, well, notice that this is being multiplied by the x squared and the y to the fourth. So when it's being multiplied, we're going to be making this expanded using addition. So the log base 6 of 5 plus the log base 6 of x squared plus the log base 6 of y to the fourth. And then we're not finished because remember, expanded form means we don't want those exponents. They have to go in front. This is not the expanded form for that last property that we talked about. It has to be in front. So this would be the log base 6 of 5 plus 2 times the log base 6 of x, plus 4 times the log base 6 of y. Looking at this one, so again, these are all being multiplied. So I'm going to expand this using addition. It's log base 2 of 6 plus the log base 2 of x plus the log base 2 of, and remember there are no radicals in the final answer, you want to rewrite as an exponent, so y to the 1 half, because this is a square root. And again, that's not expanded form, because that exponent has to go down in front. 
So this is the log base 2 of 6 plus the log base 2 of x plus 1 half times the log base 2 of y. And looking at question 6, notice the argument here, these are being divided, and then the ones in the denominator are being multiplied, so we'll take care of that second. So first we'll do the part that's being divided. So log base 3 of 27 minus the log base 3 of 5 times x to the fourth. So we can expand this further because now this log, these two inside the argument are being multiplied, so we can expand that using addition. So log base 3 of 27 minus, I'm going to put this in parentheses, log base 3 of 5 plus the log base 3 of 4. The reason I put this in parentheses is because both these terms are in the denominator, um, and so, and sorry, that's not 4, but x fourth. So then I need to take this 4 and put it in front. So log base 3 of 27 minus the log base 3 of 5 plus 4 times the log base 3 of x. And we're not done yet because we have this negative that we can distribute to both these terms. So log base 3 of 27 minus the log base 3 of 5 minus 4 times the log base 3 of x. And this would be my final answer. So notice that this is a subtraction sign. Even though we know it's being multiplied in the denominator, um, we had to distribute that negative sign. So it's still going to be in the denominator um, if you were to go backwards and do this the other way. So now we need to practice the other form. So how can we write a logarithmic equation as a single logarithmic expression? Simplify the expression from left to right using the properties of logs. The answer will have, oops, the answer will have only one log in the equation, so keep that in mind. It's a common mistake for students to write multiple logs. You only want one log in your final answer. No numbers should be left in the front of the log. No rational exponents. You want to use radical form. So looking at 7, we know the base is 10 for both of these, and the logs are being added. So in order to condense this or write it as a single log, we take the arguments and multiply them. So of course we know this is the log of 4 times 5, which is the log of 20. Looking at the next one, these are being subtracted. So to condense this, we can divide the arguments over here. So for this, before I can add these together, you always want to take the exponents up. So this would be log base 7 of 9 plus the log base 7 of 2 cubed. Now I can go ahead and take the arguments and multiply them because the two logs are being added. So this would become the log base 7 of 9 times, and 2 to the third is 8. Anytime you have something that's numerical, you always want to simplify it, and 9 times 8 is 72. So log base 7 of 72. You don't technically need those parentheses around the argument because we know this is all in the argument, but you can put it if it helps. Looking at the next one, same thing, I would want to take this up as a power first and then move from left to right. So if I have two logs being added, I multiply the arguments. So log base 5 of 2 times 3 to the fourth minus log base 5 of 9. And then 3 to the fourth is 81 times 2. So that gives us the log base 5 of 162 minus the log base 5 of 9. If you have two logs being subtracted, you divide the arguments, which gives us the log base 5 of 18. Looking at the next one, so again, this has to come up as an exponent. And then if you have two logs being added, you can condense them by using multiplication. So this is 8 times. And remember, if we have something with a fraction exponent, we can rewrite that in radical form. So this would be the cube root of 5 to the first power 
And that would be my answer. So go ahead and do 12 and 13 on your own when you're done on pause the video to check your work. So looking at number 12, first I would take this up as an exponent and then I'm going to look at these two. They're being subtracted so you take the arguments and divide them. And the next step would be looking at this right here. I know this is going to be equal to 49 to the 1 half to the square root of 49. So 49 to the 1 half equals the square root of 49, which is equal to 7. And so we have the log base 2, 36 divided by 9 is 4, plus the log base 2 of 7, and if you have two logs that are being added, you multiply the arguments of 4 and the 7. So log base 2 of 4 times 7 is 28. Now we've written it as a single log, and notice that all of our final answers so far always just have one log in it when you're condensing it. So looking at 13, bring this up as a power first here for all of these. This is base 10 for all of the problems. And something that's numerical, you can go ahead and evaluate. So this is 32. If I have two logs being added, I can multiply the argument. So times x to the 6 minus log of 5 squared, which is 25, minus the log of y to the power of 7. So then the next step, you can do a couple things. You could take out the negative and then multiply those. Um, that's a little bit harder to see, so we're just going to go ahead and move left to right like we talked about earlier. So for this, if I have two logs being subtracted, you divide the arguments. And then same thing, you have two logs being divided, or being subtracted, you divide the arguments. So recall, I'm just going to do that work over here. If I divide the arguments, 32x to the power of 6 over 25, that's being divided by y to the 7th power, remember that's over 1. How do you divide a fraction by a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal of what's in your denominator, so 32 x to the 6 over 25 times 1 over y to the 7th. How do you multiply fractions? You multiply straight across. So 32x to the 6 over 25y to the 7th. So this is equal to the log of 32x to the 6th over 25y to the 7th. And that would be my final answer. So what I was talking about earlier about taking out the negative Right here, if it makes it easier, you could take out the negative. So if I did that, I would get the log of 32x to the 6 minus parentheses log 25 plus the log of y to the 7th. And that gives us the log of 32x to the 6 minus, and then if you have two logs being added, you multiply the arguments. So minus the log of 25y to the 7th, oops, there were 27, 25y to the 7th. And notice that two logs being subtracted, you write it as 1 using division. So that's what I was talking about. It might be sometimes easier to do it that way, and then you don't have to worry about um, some multiplying by the reciprocal, um, dividing a fraction by a fraction, but whatever works for you is fine. And that's it for the properties of logic.